Hi, this is The Gun Guy. Thank you for watching my videos. Boy, am I grateful that you do that. I really, really am. And I've got a video today on the Ruger Mark series of pistols. I've shot some other videos on the Ruger Mark II, and I had a big, long 10-inch monster that day that a friend lent me, and the Ruger Mark III, and I promised that if I got a hold of a Ruger Mark I, I would show you the difference, and that's what this video is for today, because I've got the three guns in front of me. I've got the Ruger Mark I, the Ruger Mark II, and in this case, this happens to be kind of a special one too. This is a government target model. You can see that with a big bull barrel, very, very accurate uh, pistol. And then I have a Ruger Mark III. And there are some differences, so I figured I'd go over those with you. And we'll show you some close-up shots of them as well. And then we'll run out on the range and uh, we'll shoot them a little bit. The first thing I want to share with you right out of the gate is the magazines are different. So if you have a Mark II, you got to put a Mark II mag in it. Same thing with a Mark I, same thing with a Mark III. The magazines are by no means interchangeable. If you try to use them interchangeably, I suspect you're going you're to create problems for yourself. So I would strongly suggest that you don't do this. I'll also tell you that it doesn't matter which one of these pistols you have or what variety you have. They're outstanding, and they're typically known for extreme accuracy. I've shot all three of these. They're very, very accurate. But let's start with the first one, which is the one that uh, got Mo that put Ruger on the map in the first place, which was the original design, and that's the Mark I, which I've also heard people call the standard. And uh, this is the Mark I 22 long rifle standard pistol by Ruger. It's extremely simple. I mean, it's ridiculously simple. And they got more complex a little bit as time went by. But just to give you an idea, there's very little controls on this pistol. The sights are fixed. You got a fixed front sight and you got a kind of a drift adjustable rear sight if you want to take a mallet to it and tap it. But I, I'm not sure how, how adjustable it is. I'm not even sure if it is adjustable. I've never tried to adjust one, but it looks as if it's it's, uh, it's, you could drift it one way or the other. I, I don't know that I'd try it, but you, I suppose you could. Uh, I've been shooting this one, and this one is very accurate, so it doesn't need to be adjusted anyway. Now, as far as controls are concerned, the only control on the pistol is this one here, really, other than the trigger, and that is the safety. It also acts as the slide stop. So it's now in the up position, which means the gun is on safe, and you can see the slide is locked in place. If I press it down without pinching my finger there up here, uh, you can see the slide falls forward and now it will go back and forth until I pushed it on safe again and now the slide is locked and it will not move. So this is both the safety and the slide lock or slide stop. That being the case, this gun, when you fire the last round out of the magazine, will not automatically lock the slide to the rear. So you fire your last round and you're going to press the trigger again and get click and that's how you're going to know it's empty unless you count them, and I don't know who does that. Because this does not lock back on its own. That's one of the things that this original pistol was never designed to do. The other thing I should show you, if I show you the magazine, is that this magazine is a little different than the others. You'll see that there's a great big base on this magazine here, and that shortens the magazine quite a bit. This magazine only holds nine rounds, where the magazine for the newer guns holds ten. You'll also notice this little nub up here uh, that can slide all the way down here. That's so that you can use that to push the follower down a little bit. You can see if I push it, the follower moves. That allows you to get the follower out of the way with your thumb. Makes it a little easier to load the, the magazines. They're kind of a booger to load otherwise, and if you didn't have this, it'd be really, really tough. Now, this is a different shape and size than the one for the Mark II. And this and the, uh, and the Mark I mag are a different shape and size than the one for the Mark III. So they're not interchangeable. They all do, all these little nubs do the same thing. But since they're a different shape and size, you can't use one magazine and the other gun. You've got to have the right magazine for the right gun. Now, back to the Mark I again. The way that you remove the magazine from a Mark I is by getting this little rotating magazine lock back here on the base of the pistol and you can see it if you look very close and if I get it you can see that it's serrated so I can get a hold of the serrations and as I pull it it rocks back and that's what lets the magazine go because when I put the magazine in as it gets to the bottom you'll notice that that little device here snaps over the bottom of the mag and holds it in place so in order to get it out I have to rock that back which allows the magazine to be removed. Now this didn't change from the Mark 1 to the Mark 2 but they changed it on the Mark 3. 
So on the Mark I and Mark II, that's what you use to remove the magazine. There is no magazine release behind the trigger guard as you would expect on many pistols. It just doesn't exist on this pistol. Now this particular one is on loan to me and somebody along the line drilled it and tapped it for a scope or some sort of optic and that's why you see those holes there. But it didn't come that way. They didn't do that initially. That's something that was done by someone afterwards. And this pistol is quite old. This was probably built in the 60s or late 50s. Uh, you'll still find them. I don't know that you'll find too many of them in this kind of condition. This thing is in outstanding condition. The finish has got a couple little blemishes on it, but not much. And it doesn't appear to have been shot a whole lot. And I've shot it. I'm going to shoot it for this video today. And it just runs like a Swiss watch. And you'll see when you're looking at the targets when I'm shooting it how accurate it is. Now that's the Mark I. Let's look at the Mark II. This is a Mark II that is kind of unusual. You don't see a lot of them, but I have seen them. This is the Mark II government target model. So, and that's what it actually says on the side of it, government target model. And there are some differences between the Mark II and the Mark I. One of the most ergonomic differences is this little, uh, you can see right here, if you look maybe closely enough, you can see that they've, they've cut out some little cutouts there on the back of the slide. So if you let the slide go forward, it's just so much easier to grab the back of the slide right here because they've cut that out to make it easier to get your thumb on these little uh, lips to grab them to pull that back. On the Mark I, it's just one round tube all the way to the back, and that doesn't exist. It makes it a little harder to get a hold of that sometimes. So in order to make it more ergonomic, they, they cut this in a little bit, gives you a chance to get a better grip on the mag to pull it back. So that's kind of cool. You'll also notice that on this target model, it has a raised, very large, and easily pronounced, and, and, or easily seen and pronounced front sight, target sight, and it has fully adjustable uh, sights in the rear. They're click adjustable for windage and elevation. They're outstanding target sights on this gun. This also has a heavy barrel, makes it a little bit more accurate, and, uh, and it is a little bit more accurate, a little longer barrel and a little heavier, but they're all pretty accurate. Now again, as I said, this is a Mark II, so you'll notice that the magazine comes out the same way. You, when it locks in place, you roll that back, and that allows you to remove the magazine. That wasn't updated until we got to the Mark III. On the Mark II, though, there is a big update, and that's this thing right here. It's got its own separate slide stop. So we're going to let that slide go forward. Put the mag in and see if it locks back, because I don't remember whether it does or not. Here we go. It does. Okay, so that's the other change between the Mark I, Mark II, and Mark III. The Mark I does not lock back. The Mark IIs and Mark III's do lock back on the final round. I was pretty sure it was. It did, but I didn't remember. And then with the Mark III, there are some additional updates. Now, they kept a lot of the nice ergonomic things on the Mark III that were on the Mark II, like the little cutouts out here that make it easier to grab the slide, and the better sights, the click adjustable sights for windage and elevation, and the nice big target sights. This, of course, is a heavy barreled version of the Mark III with target sights on it. And these things come in just about every version you could come up with, different materials, stainless and blued and so on, and the different sights and different barrels, and you can have them customized ad infinitum if you really want to do that. But out of the box, these also come drilled and tapped for a scope, which the Mark IIs didn't, and neither did the Mark I. Uh, as I showed you on that Mark I, somebody did it later on, but these come that way, and uh, I've never put a scope on this one, but the screws are in there, and I could take them out and do that anytime I wanted to. This also, like the Mark II, has the separate slide stop. And like the Mark II, on the last round, the slide will lock back automatically. The safety is the same. And it, it has one big difference, and that is the mag release is now here on the pistol. And so if I insert the magazine and press the button, I can take the magazine out rather than having the mag release up here. Now that makes a difference in the magazine as well. You'll notice on this magazine, if you look very closely, there's a little uh, nub or whatever you want to call it on the magazine right there that does not exist on the Mark II and Mark I magazines. They're smooth all the way up and down. This one has this little protrusion and that's there so that internally the uh, magazine catch can catch the mag and hold it there and then when you press the magazine release it moves it out of the way and allows it to slide out. Now the problem with that is that this magazine can only be used on the Mark III. So that's why I said each magazine is designed for each gun. The Mark I, Mark II, and Mark III have their own magazine designs and they're not interchangeable. So I want to just share with you, don't try to interchange them. Now one problem we did find with the Mag I, or with the uh, Mark I as we had students use them, is if you put the magazine in backwards rather than in the proper way, this can sometimes cause the magazine to catch in the gun 
about yay far in and you can't get it out. You gotta take it to a pistol smith. There's no way. We've tried taking the pistols apart. We couldn't get it out. The only way we could get it done is take it to a pistol smith that was experienced with Ruger guns and he was able to get them out. We had it happen to us twice and then we stopped allowing students to load the own, their own guns, brand new shooters. We loaded the mags, loaded the pistols to them, for them and handed them a loaded pistol while they were on the line and uh, would finger off the trigger and got them started that way and that kept us from having to invest in having these taken out all the time. So if you buy one, make sure you put the magazine in the correct way and you shouldn't have that problem. In any case, those are the differences between the three. I will tell you, I have not seen much of an accuracy difference except within the various models. Uh, you know, if you get a different models of Mark IIs, some of them with the longer barrels, heavier barrels are more accurate than others. Same thing with the Mark III, same thing with the Mark I's. But the Mark I is ridiculously accurate as well. It's just a little different in its design. So if you've been wondering about the differences, that's what they are. Now at this point, I'm going to take that Mark I out and I'm going to go shoot it for you because it's a terrific pistol and you'll get to watch it run. And then I'll be back briefly after that. Well, as you can see, this little Ruger Mark I is a terrific pistol. It shoots really, really well. Uh, I wish I could take it home with me, but I can't. I gotta clean it back, uh, back up and give it back to my buddy who lent it to me. It is a lot of fun to shoot. It's extremely accurate. It's a little different than I'm used to because I've got the Mark II and Mark III, uh, but uh, without the slide stop, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't stop, uh, lock the slide back on the last round. So you always get that click, and then you realize you're empty unless you count nine. Ah, come on now, who counts? You're just shooting at tin cans or whatever, you're not counting. Uh, but it's handy, it's relatively light for a Mark pistol because of the lighter barrel, and yet it's just dead nuts accurate. It's really accurate. I really enjoyed shooting it. It's also drilled and tapped for a little scope, which apparently he had on it at one time or another. So you could put a little pistol scope on it, or maybe a little red dot, and have a tremendous amount of fun with this thing. Terrific guns, these little Mark pistols, they really are. If you don't have one, uh, it might be a good purchase for you. Unfortunately, in California, I don't think they're on the list anymore, so they're really tough to get here. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to watch the videos I did on the Mark II and Mark III series videos, you can click on the associated video to do that, uh, or just look within the videos on the channel and you'll find them if you search for the Mark series pistols, you'll find them there. And if you wouldn't mind, please, uh, if you wouldn't mind, join the National Rifle Association. I'll put a link here for you to do that. That will help us fight for our Second Amendment rights. And as you can tell, if you've watched the news at all, we're fighting for them constantly and they're constantly under attack. Uh, so I really would appreciate it if you'd join. Now, if you get a chance to come out here to the P2K range, you happen to be in the San Diego area, please come on by. If you see me shooting video or if I'm teaching or something, uh, just wait till I pause and then come on up and say hi. I'd love to meet you. And uh, maybe if we've got a little time, we can shoot together. Anyway, thank you again very much for watching. Have a wonderful week. Please like, subscribe. There's a button right up here to do that. That way we can notify you when new videos come out. We try to get them done every week and at least do two and we'll get those out for you on a variety of guns. If you have a gun you'd like me to, uh, to do a video on, you're welcome to ship it to me. You can do that by shipping it here to the P2K range and we'll do a video on it. It'll never leave the range and we'll ship it right back to you. And if you'd like information on that, just go to my blog at gunguy.tv and go to the, uh, to the review page. In fact, I'll put a link right here or somewhere up here for you to do that in case you got something you'd like to send us for us to look at. And we'll, send, we'll clean it up and send it right back to you. Anyway, thank you again for watching very much. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful week and stay safe.